for you. There he is. Name pad. There Early it is. Toe. Yeah. We're investigating some fossil trackways that were left probably 72,000 years ago or longer. These tracks lie on Bureau of Reclamation lands on a project site in southeastern Idaho. They were discovered in August of 2010 by paleontologist and reclamation volunteer Steve Robeson. When I first saw them, I was out here just walking the beaches looking for to see if there was anything around. Rarely have I ever found any fossils in the cliffs, but I, I glanced over. I was probably, I don't know, 150 feet from the outcrop, and, and I could see one of the deep tracks, and I thought, looks almost like it could be an, an elephant track or, you know, a mammoth track. There were several other shallower tracks, but they continued on there. And so I thought, this looks like I've got a trackway here. I got Tyler to come out with me, and, and we uncovered a bunch of it. Him and I did the preliminary uh, excavation on this area. We found 18 proboscidean tracks and two felid tracks. These animals lived during the Pleistocene, or Ice Age. In this time, southeastern Idaho was cool and moist, the landscape ridden with heavy vegetation and deciduous forests. The Bureau of Reclamation is interested in the tracks from this period because they are an exceptionally unique find. We have a lot of dinosaur trackways because of the sediments those trackways are preserved in. They're sort of a little bit more hard rock. When we get this young into the, what we call the Pleistocene, those ice ages, it's rarer that we find the trackways preserved. And it's because of the sediments that these animals were walking in. It's fairly significant from a research perspective to the paleontological community because of its rareness. Uh, it's important to the Bureau of Reclamation simply because it's um, a resource that we need to manage and um, it has uh, a lot of value to the public. In April of 2011, tons of dirt fell from the cliff, but it was decided that this would help preserve the tracks until excavation could begin. But three and a half months later, the wave action of the reservoir undercut the clay layer. The reservoir stayed at the high water level, it down cut underneath it, and it caved the banks off where they were, and we lost almost every track that we had last year. We found out very soon after that there was going to be an erosion, erosion control project taking place right along this area where our tracks were. Through the Bureau of Reclamation and the Idaho Museum of Natural History, then they put things together to, to come out and, and try to do a, at least salvage some information. Also involved in this project are the Park Service, BLM, and Forest Service. We needed to document these tracks before this erosion control project came through because once it came through, these tracks are not going to be accessible to us for study. We try to do protective and preservation measures on resources like this so that we can give some public benefit, primarily through education, but also, in this case, gathering data for researchers. It is two and three quarters of an inch. It appears that the tracks were made in a, in a very soft unit, uh, some kind of clay, silty stuff. Uh, as they are, trying to collect them would probably almost certainly destroy them, uh, particularly the larger the mammoth or mastodon tracks. They just would not last. Don't want to use a shovel on it because it damaged the surface. Therefore, they have had to find different methods of preserving the information. The main goal for me is making latex casts, just a simple latex with burlap. This is a canid track that I made. Got the pad, four toes for it. Then we also have one of the proboscidean tracks with toe preservation. Here are the toe prints, right there. started some experimenting with being able to preserve the sand in cross-section. Some of them are more, more steep angled and that's a higher energy and some of them are just flat. I will be working on the palynology. Palynology would be the pollen uh, that's been preserved at the time. It'll tell you the climate at the time, uh, hopefully the season. The 
trackway location itself is not available to the public due to the Paleontological Resources Preservation Act of 2009. Which uh, protects paleontological resources that are discovered on federal lands. There's a uh, resources management component, an education component to the legislation, as well as a criminal component for um, individuals who go onto public lands and actually steal and or vandalize. Researchers, legitimate people, can be on the public lands with permits now to um, excavate and research paleontological resources. So when we do issue a permit, there has to be a relationship and an agreement with a museum or a repository to store the federal property, to care for the federal property in perpetuity, um, and then do research on it as well. This is where the Idaho Museum of Natural History comes in. Through their research and partnership with the Bureau of Reclamation, they will publish information about the find and create an exhibit that will be available to the public in spring 2012. For more information, contact Reclamation Snake River Area Office at 208-383-2257.